In today's video, we're taking a look at the Annapolis with Halsey. This is one of my favorite combinations in the game, simply because the DPM is so nuts. The other great thing about the Annapolis, of course, is the team utility. We looked at the Vallejo a little bit last week, and I missed the radar, I gotta say. I really did miss the radar on a light cruiser. I really enjoy playing close to caps, taking engagements with DDs, and really trying to win, at least the early game, those DD fights. It opens up the whole rest of the game for your team, since your DDs now are ahead on HP or in kills completely. So they can control much more of the map. And that's what really can set the tone for a good or bad game, depending on how that initial DD engagement goes. Of course, in this one, I mean, our DDs were insanely aggressive. I don't know if that's quite so good, <laughs> but we were at least able to hopefully get the Z52 out of that and set ourselves up reasonably well on the A flank here. One thing you should really notice as I guess he burnt out, which is pretty lucky for us, uh, notice that we're facing our broadside towards the edge of the map here. So what this does is it allows us to fire all our guns at this Borgone. We're reasonably well angled to him, so we're probably gonna bounce things. Borgone doesn't have the highest caliber of guns. But what it also means is we're very well angled to the enemies in the middle of the map. And since they don't really have anyone on the flank, we're not really showing broadside to anyone, even though we're open water as a cruiser. It's something that you should really be paying attention to, who you're potentially showing your broadside to. And this isn't something you should always be doing. There are reasons to take the risk of showing your broadside to someone in order to get to a better position, or maybe you need to take that risk to potentially get away from a very bad position instead of staying stuck in that bad position where you know you're gonna die. There's a lot of reasons for it. Uh, but in this case, it is just to safely farm up some damage. And notice we waited to turn until we go dark here. Or going as a reload booster, we don't wanna get surprised by that. The other thing is, I tend to use my reload booster or this burst fire on the Annapolis when I know I'm going to go dark or when I know I'm about to get behind an island or somebody's about to exit my range, that kind of thing. That's really when I want to be using this burst fire. Otherwise, the DPM. I love the DPM. Uh, certainly made a bit of a mistake here and we get a little bit lucky <laughs> that the Borgone and uh, the Ruprecht don't really get a hold of us too well here. Annapolis is a little bit better when it's flat broadside than the Des Moines, for example. It's got some spaced armor, which we can look at in port if you didn't know. it's uh, It's got some seriously spaced armor. <laughs> There's like a black hole in the middle of this ship. So it can turn broadside and get a little bit lucky in those cases. I certainly should have played better and not just given flat broadside there, but I was getting aggressive trying to catch the DD off guard with an aggressive push out from behind that island. It's something I really want to be doing is pushing up to islands and using them to get the drop on an enemy destroyer, for example. It's really, really powerful since an Annapolis has not the best concealment and it certainly doesn't have a stealth radar. It's one of the ways that I can get some serious value out of this radar when I pop out from behind an island, see I'm spotted, more than likely the DD is within my range since they hadn't seen me before I left that island. Another great use of the burst fire here is to get a pot shot in on this Annapolis and we're going to do nearly 20k. <laughs> yeah, the AP is no joke on the Annapolis as well. It's Des Moines AP, we all know it's pretty good, but in that burst fire, if we can hit the right parts of the ship, wow, it does so much damage. And notice I did it right as I'm getting behind island cover again, right? So that Annapolis can't follow up against me here and we're going to go dark. Even though this Prince Ruprecht is right in front of us, the Holland, I think, is spotting us from the cap here. The Ruprecht wouldn't be spotting us, but we move forward anyway, trying to get some damage in on him. It's a bit of a mistake, though. Notice my Hydro is not available yet. Pushing into the open water from behind islands, especially with teammates behind you, or, I mean, this is just a torpedo alley, right? We all, like, it's just perfect for torps. So I should have waited for my Hydro, bit of hindsight here. And yeah, we get ourselves into a bit of a rough situation. <laughs> uh, but that way, you know, I make a mistake and let you guys know. Maybe you'll know better for next time. Uh, so we're forced to turn in here, which can be a bit tricky, especially with these not being very fast torpedoes. This is something I didn't really notice at the time when I was playing. But yeah, though, those weren't Holland Torps. Those were the Ruprex torpedoes. So in fact, we're going to eat a Holland torpedo. 
Fortunately, they're not the most devastating, but it's still a lot of damage that I'm eating early on that I didn't have to. We're still all right on HP, but you never want to give away HP for free. You don't really want to use that valuable resource, especially as a cruiser. If you got some HP in the end game, man, playing a cruiser is so nice when you got some HP versus when you're on a sliver of health. As we activate Halsey's Confederate talent, which by the way, gives us an insane reload, uh, which is amazing on the Annapolis, I wanna point out my angling again. Notice we're angled, our broadside faces towards the middle of the map, not the outside. So now we're taking a bit of a risk here. I do really wanna kill off the enemy Annapolis, but had a battleship been looking at me from the middle of the map, or had I just been spotted, for example, in that kind of scenario, I could have easily gotten dev struck there. That is something to keep in mind about my positioning there. I was taking risk. It's not always going to work out like that. And I tend to try and be more, a little more mindful about my angling. The Prince Ruprecht is coming out, so we're going to spam him with some HE, try and kill him. Remember, we do have 30 millimeter upper belt and deck armor, so we will auto bounce if we give him the right angle. Although I'm not quite angled enough in this case, so we do take a pretty big hit. It's one of the downsides, I guess, to the Annapolis. When we have so much firepower, both front and back, I'm a little greedier to get it off, right? I'm a little greedier to make use of all of it. Whereas Des Moines, where we have so much firepower up front, I'm a little more willing to just go bow in. Um, not so on the Annapolis, even though it's probably the right decision. A great example here of how I can use islands to surprise destroyers. I was last spotted way in the north there where I was shooting at the Ruprecht. Skipping ahead in time here, I managed to flank and not be spotted the whole time around these islands, and we catch the Holland off guard. He was doing a great job trying to get the flank of my teammates. Notice they're pushing through the ACAP. A very reasonable idea from the destroyer is to just get on their broadside and torp them, right? It makes a lot of sense, so that's why I came out here. And it actually managed to work out, which was pretty nice. Islands like this are a lot of fun when you're in a radar cruiser. It allows you to get the drop on DDs a lot like that. Although we've used up all our radars now. Not the most efficient use for all of them, but I think we got some pretty good value. We already have three kills and helped our team at least claw out a bit of an advantage at this point. And now I get greedy. I say, I've got a Halsey Confederate on my Annapolis. I'm just gonna burn down this Montana for free and it's gonna be amazing. I'm gonna get all the damage numbers in the world. And we do, we do a really good job here, except I kind of forget about the Borgone. And we're gonna be broadside to a Borgone or a Montana. And this is really not a position I wanna be in. Had I recognized this a little bit sooner, I probably should have turned in towards the island on my left here instead of going broadside. Um, this would have been a much better play. It would have cut off the angle the Borgone would have had on me. I would have been able to get closer to the Montana instead of turning out to try and get a little farther away from him. It would have been a little easier to finish him off. And I severely underestimate the Monty's reload. I think I got 30 seconds. I can turn out. And no, this Monty had a pretty good reload. Probably Adrenaline Rush is just not being calculated in my head properly. And he gets an amazing hit on us. Not killing us though, very luckily for myself. It still would have been an awesome game. Even activating Halsey Confederate isn't gonna happen all the time, but there was so much more potential to this game. But we get our fourth kill, which is quite nice. And somehow the Marseille does not finish us off. There's the high caliber as well. We are doing a decent job of farming damage. And I think we can actually finish him off before he shoots us, or at least in time. We might even get ourselves a Kraken. The Sherman opens up on us, so I'm probably gonna go down here. Notice we're also out of heals. We're on our last uh, our last Hydro. So we've used basically all the consumables we could, and we do manage to finish the Marseille for a Kraken Unleashed. A very successful Annapolis game that I was hoping would lead to into six kills here with the Sherman. He's so low, but I actually end up missing him. I was pretty disappointed. I was hoping that I would be able to kill him there. That would have really helped me a lot to go dark a little quicker and maybe not eat a Borgone Salvo flat broadside in our Annapolis on 1000 HP. <laughs> uh, but the Borgone misses, we're alive. We're alive, barely. And then I get greedy. Um, I get greedy, I see the DD pushing into A and I think, let me get one burst. Just give me one burst Salvo. That's all I ask for at the end of this game thinking I would be safe, because who runs a 17 and a half kilometer Sherman? Surely that's a little bit excessive on the range, but nope, this guy's running a 17 kilometer Sherman and it catches me off guard. So you know what, fair play. 
Uh, so that is going to be the match. I was really hoping that there could have been six or seven kills in this one if I'd played it just a little bit better, but still an amazing match. And yeah, 3.15 base XP, that's pretty solid. That's what I love about these radar cruisers that ships without radar, the cruisers without radar don't have. I can do all this battle impact early on, helping my team win and still get a ton of damage. As for the build on the Annapolis with Halsey here, I am running a bit of a hybrid build. I'm going for some reload, I'm going for some concealment, trying to maximize those consumables as you can see how valuable those can be. I'm even taking Survivability Expert, which probably saved my life this game. It's not always that it does that, but that little bit of extra P HP sorry, can be very helpful sometimes. Uh, gun feet are always nice, especially the improved one on Halsey. And given the sometimes not amazing turret traverse of the Des Moines style turrets, uh, yeah, grease the gears quite nice to have. You'll notice that I'm also running range mod, which means that we also have a little bit quicker turret traverse. Uh, one of the downsides, of course, of reload is that slower turret traverse. And, you know, it's pretty comfy to have extra range at tier 11 because, I mean, the game's pretty passive. We know that, we know that. So range mod is how I've got it right now but reload can certainly be a ton of fun. So that's the video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below about the Annapolis. It's probably one of my favorite super ships to play at the moment because it feels so action packed. There's so much battle impact and farming potential. Just a really good time. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you have a great rest of your day.